Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the interview of Dr. Bilal Jalais, a seven-star Islamic scholar. This is Salam TV. My name is Ashura Mutali. So many people know you as Dr. Bilal Jalais, but I believe someone out there might be wondering who Dr. Bilal Jalais is. Who are you, Mr. Well, I'm a Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica, born in a Christian family, raised in Canada. My parents migrated to Canada when I was quite small and raised as a Christian. From there, I moved with my family to Malaysia when I graduated from high school and lived there again as a Christian. Though I lived amongst Muslims there, I didn't really know what Islam was. I returned to Canada to do my university degree in biochemistry. And um, while I was in university, I got caught up in the student movement, a movement which was seeking to make a better world for human beings. The role that Canada was playing in the Vietnam War at the time, Canada was making the bombs which the Americans were dropping on the Vietnamese. The napalm, which uh, is liquid which comes over you and burns you whilst you're standing there, you know. Um, it's horrible, very horrible. And uh, can Canada was producing these bombs. So the students, uh, took over the campus and protested against Canada's involvement, etc., etc. So I got caught up in that uh, movement, uh, political movement of sorts. And in the course of being involved in that type of um, activity, I also got or imbibed some of the ideas of those behind the movement for change they were proposing communism. What could we do better? How could we do this better? And communism was the, the proposal. So I became a communist whilst I was in, uh, in, in Canada, in university, in Simon Fraser University. And from there, I did a stint with the Communist Party in the US and uh, eventually traveled back to Canada and continued to work with various communist-related uh, groups while being disheartened, thinking that communism really wasn't the answer because it couldn't compete with capitalism. And um, at the same time, it was very vicious. I could see, you know, Mao Zedong, Cultural Revolution, millions were killed. In Stalin's time in Russia, again, millions of Russians were killed. You know, because they said they were the bourgeoisie who couldn't be reformed. You know, their mindset was so capitalistic that the only way to change society was to just kill them all, wipe them out. And somehow that didn't sit right with me. I mean, it was going on, it was going on in the name of, you know, of society, uh, betterment of society, etc. But it seemed to me to be evil. So it, it left me in a vacuum wanting to find another system which would provide all that communism was claiming to provide but free from the evils of communism and of course i became a communist which meant i had to disbelieve in god's existence you know from being a christian because you could say i was a nominal christian i was a christian in name yeah i did go to the church and but but i wasn't really you know, a hardcore practicing Christian who stood by all its principles and that. So, you know, Christianity was like, uh, as with most Christians, it's just something that's part of your culture. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. because your mother is... It, was, it, didn't ha it, it didn't have principles which would provide or could compete with communism. It didn't have an economic system, you know, it didn't have a political system, it didn't have all of this, this was missing. So it wasn't an option. So I easily went into communism. Whereas 
At that stage when communism failed for me, uh, I started to look, I saw Islam and I started to read about Islam. That's the point. How did you get to, to like Islam? How did it inspire you to become a Muslim? Well, you know, the thing is that it was at a particular time, that that time when I had become disillusioned about communism. So I was open. And uh, there were some brothers from America who were in Toronto at the time I'd gone back to Toronto. And they were trying to, they had become Muslims in America, and they were trying to spread the ideas amongst us as youth. Um, for the most part, in the organization that I was in, we rejected because we already had accepted the idea that, that religion was the opium of the masses. It was just a means of drugging people into not knowing what their rights are and what they should do. Uh, make them calm. Yes, so that they, so they could be controlled easily and ruled. Okay. So uh, at this point in time, what happens is that they actually, one of them, Abdullah Hakim Quick, he succeeded in reaching one uh, female who was in the uh, central committee of our organization, and she accepted Islam. So when, he re when, he, when she accepted Islam, that caused me to question uh, what's Why? going on. Why? <laughs> Why would you do what's, that? What's the secret behind? Yeah. Hmm. You know, so I then asked her, how? How can you do that? We know that, you know, religion is just uh, a means of controlling people, you know. It doesn't... Make, it doesn't make any sense. Well, they say. it doesn't make life better in the sense of societal life. Maybe individually it might, you know, you work for an individual. Up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you accept oppression, you turn the other cheek. So when the you know, so how do you change and correct evil when you're turning the other cheek? So she said, No, 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 this is not uh, religion like we knew. You know, Christianity, that's Christianity. Mm -hmm. Islam is different. Islam doesn't say turn the other cheek. <laughs> Islam says, if you attack me, I'm going to fight you. Okay. <laughs> you understand? So Islam was not about... And then, and then also, I, at that time, I was also reading about liberation movements in Africa. And then I came across, the, you know, the Algerian Revolution. And the battle cry for the Algerian Revolution was Allahu Akbar. Okay. You see, so that yeah, said, oh, <laughs> this means that there is something there, you know. That means these are people... The religion is driving them to fight against the oppression of the French. Okay. So, so that, you know, opened up some avenues for me to reflect. I said, okay, give me some books, let me start to read. And mm -hmm. I started to read, you know, books about Islam and Islamic theory and concepts and politics and economics and all these kind of things. And Alhamdulillah, after reading, it became clear to me that, yes, what I was looking for, is it's there. You know, what I wanted to avoid was not there. You know, and there was some good in Christianity. It was there in Islam. Mm. The, the, the weaknesses, not having political systems and things, it is there in Islam, the, the, the political system. All the missing things from Christianity were there in Islam. You could say theoretically. But I still had to deal with belief in God. Because as a communist, I had denied God's existence. Okay for so many years, right? So how do you turn that from means that? You, you didn't have to do anything that to do with God. You didn't pray. No, 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 no. As a communist, of course, you, you, you deny God's existence. So how are you going to pray? Pray to what? You just go partying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's your, that's your prayer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when was that? That was 1972. Okay. You know, I then... I then uh, had a, a personal experience which brought the reality of God back into my life. Okay. And um, it was, it's a little bit of a story, so I mean, maybe we'll leave it to another time. Sure. Uh, it's uh, available online anyway. Okay. But the point is I had a personal experience uh, which made me realize that there was 
power in this world which was beyond human beings, you know, which saved me at a time when nothing could save me. Nobody around me could save me, could help me, etc. I had this experience and that convinced me that, yeah, there must be a God. So once I had that experience, then the step to accepting Islam was very simple. You know, I then went and declared my faith, learned my basic prayers, and, uh, you know, started to practice Islam, to fast and, and all the different things connected with it. What is your purpose for the visit? My visit uh, to Uganda is basically to further uh, the uh, presence of my university, the Islamic Online University. Students was not very high. Um, unlike other countries that are English speaking, where the numbers were quite high, we have you know, maybe 100 or 150 or 200 new students every semester. Uh, Uganda was somewhat on the lower side. So I felt that coming here may help to um, spark uh, interest in the university. You know, so I, I agreed and was invited actually from last year, but uh, I was on a tour of the countries of the region and I ran out of time, so I wasn't able to make it here. So this year, you know, I set aside time for it and um, some Ugandans, uh, Ugandan um, uh, auditor in, in Qatar uh, invited me to come and the students from my university who are here, who have a student committee here, they coordinated with her to bring me down and um, also some other friends of mine, you know, in academia who are in Malaysia, they helped to, to facilitate the um, arrangements for my stay while I'm here to meet various uh, public figures, important figures in the Muslim community. So uh, I decided to come down to, to make people more aware of the, the Islamic Online University, um, to at the same time establish links with other institutions here, Islamic institutions, to work along with them to uh, enter into agreements and, uh, and alhamdulillah to find also affiliations which alhamdulillah we managed to, to do that just uh, we did an affiliation with uh, the IUIU or we could say it was really an MOA towards affiliation the intention is to affiliate with uh, the IUIU and um, uh, also to bring to the country uh, scholarships for the disenfranchised youth who graduate from university and due to the fact that they just don't have the finances they can't do any further study so we wanted I wanted to try to reach out to those youth and so I brought uh, at least 1,000 scholarships That's to uh, help out in upgrading and uplifting the community of the Gam of uh, okay. Uganda. So when you talk about the scholarships, are they meant for the, I mean, which class of students should go for the scholarships? The high school, you know, we have two grades in Uganda. We have the O level, that's the ordinary level, and then we have the advanced, that's a level. Mm -hmm. Who are qualified for those scholarships? It's the advanced level, those who have uh, the qualifications which will put them in a university here because mm -hmm. if we are to issue a degree here it has to be in accordance with the rules of the country from the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. you know for acceptance in the university so though there are there is maybe a, a, some leeway we have to and we'll look into it because our degree is a four-year degree whereas when a person does A-levels, they go into university here, they're doing it in three years. So we have an additional year. So, you know, I will look into what possibilities there are with the ministry to see if it's possible, based on the four-year degree principle, that those from O-levels with high O-level passes would be allowed to 
enter. That's something to look into. Okay. But right now, our basic uh, requirements is A levels. And before we go any further, what is Islamic Online University? Well, the Islamic Online University is my effort to offer tertiary education to the world. I already set up a university in Chennai, India, India, the first in 2009, the first Islamic university in India, which offered Sharia along with business administration. Uh, is that, too, pardon? Is it online too? No, no, no. This is on the ground. We set up a university on the ground. The only university in the city that had air-conditioned classrooms, you know. So we, we made a premium level university. However, um, uh, I felt, it was Allah's will also, that, you know, I returned to Qatar from India. I had gone to India for one year to set up this university and to run it that I return and look elsewhere for further development. The university has continued till today. It's still running. And it has about, uh, about 600 students, you know, uh, who have studied and graduated and who are currently in the university total. But in though I started in 2009. When I went back to Qatar in 2010, I launched the bachelor's program uh, for Sharia. And I added to that afterwards education and Islamic banking and finance and other subjects. In that same period of time, 600 students in uh, Chennai, the university in Chennai, it's called Preston International College. Oh. Uh, here online, I had 6,000 students registered. And so we're talking about 10 times the amount online. Furthermore, we also have 244,000 students in that period of time uh, who are currently also studying diploma courses in Islamic studies for free online. So we have a total of 250,000 students. So in the same period of time, in it took... Place. No, online. Online. In Chennai, we got 600 students. Okay. Online, we now have 250,000 students. So it was obvious that the online is the way to go. If we wanted the message to be international and global, you know, then it is, it is, the future is in online education. So this is why I focus then on online study. Okay. Because also, with online study, we are able to reduce the costs you know, tremendously. So the student who studies with us here, we're not on scholarship, who are just studying with us, regular so students, they, have to pay the, the fees? they pay only registration fees of $90 per semester. Meaning that what they're paying total for a degree is $720 for a degree four which years. will, for a four year degree, which would cost them as a three year degree here at least. Five thousand plus dollars. So we're talking about, you know, a tenth of what they would pay. Okay, that's really good. So how can someone join if someone perhaps wants to join the online university? Well, of course, it's very simple. Uh, they just have to go online: www.iou.edu.gm. We also have representatives here and they can be contacted. If they go online, they can find out who is the representative, contact details, etc., mm -hmm. for Uganda, and they can call them up, uh, email them, whatever, to get help. Otherwise, it's possible to just go online, register, pay your fees, join the university and study. But we try to encourage the students to be in contact with other students. You know, we, so we're establishing some kind of learning centers where people would be able to go and get internet access uh, free uh, to help reduce costs. So, uh, inshallah, we should in the next year, over the next year, have a number of centers. Uh, we have already examination centers, different parts of the city, but we'll increase those 
you know, um, IUIU being one of our mm. partners, we would have all of their campuses as examination centers. Then we would also uh, partner with other organizations that are involved in education in the city, whether it's UMTA and UMIA and these other types of bodies, mm. uh, as well as the uh, Islamic Call uh, University College. We have already arranged to partner with them and uh, help them in their development. They're in the early stages of the of IOU to Islam and to the development of Islam. Well, generally speaking, we have to say that um, what is unique about the IOU courses, if we take aside the Sharia, and of course our Sharia is taught in English medium, so students don't have to learn Arabic first and then join. They learn Arabic simultaneously along with the Sharia courses which are taught in English. But the unique thing is that when we teach, for example, our bachelor's program in education, students will learn the conventional ideas and concepts, but at the same time, they will learn the Islamic point of view. How does Islam view and look at the, uh, the field of education? Similarly, in psychology, we have an Islamic view on psychology. So we're studying Islamic psychology, you could say. We learn conventional, or we could call it comparative study of psychology. Similarly, in business administration, even information technology, we always bring in, in, in all of our classes, where there is relevance and Islam has something to say about the different elements of what are being taught, those elements will be mentioned. What Islam has to say is mentioned. So the student graduates with an Islamic overview of his or her discipline, her field or study. Okay. So when the people are done with their, uh, their, their degree or their diploma, how do they access the certificate? Is it real certificate or how do you do it? Well, it's a degree. It's a bachelor's degree. We have accreditation right now in Somalia which is UNESCO recognized, okay. so it is globally recognized. But we, as I said, will uh, affiliate with local institutions mm -hmm. so that the Ministry of Higher Education here does also recognize the certificates that we issue uh, so that you know, students will not find any kind of difficulty in getting a, you know, a equivalency for their degrees. Okay. So why did you specifically choose Uganda for, the, for all those scholarships, I mean, there are so many. You said a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Why did you think of Uganda? And thousand is just the beginning. Okay. Yes. Uh, why did I think of Uganda? Because Uganda is an, an English-speaking country, as I mentioned in the beginning, okay. you know, which I was certain, as a third world country, had a lot of students who were disenfranchised. Mm. The same offer is there in Nigeria, it is there in uh, Sierra Leone, it's there in Ghana, it's there in Gambia, you know, countries of Africa, it's there in Malawi, uh, Tanzania, we're looking uh, wherever uh, there is that big need, then we are prepared to try to help in the upliftment. Because the university doesn't have limits on its intake. We're not like the conventional university where you only have so many classrooms and so many seats, tables and chairs in the classrooms. So if there's only 50 tables and chairs, you, you can't put 100 in there, which is different when you have a virtual classroom, you can have 1,000 people in one class, you know? So this is the uh, advantage of online education. Uh, we do hope to, to have by 2020, at least 50,000 students who are uh, registered and studying in our degree programs. By then, uh, it is likely that our, um, our numbers of free diploma students who are studying Islam, the Islamic diploma program freely, that their numbers will be more than half a million. Mm 